Hey YouTube, it's Barry Gardner. Today we're going to be doing an oil change on my 2011 4.6 liter V8 Toyota Tundra. Let's get to it. The first thing we have to do is remove this skid plate. So there are three screws, uh, Phillips head screws, or I believe you can also use a 10 millimeter socket to loosen up these three screws that are at the front of the skid plate. One, two, three. And then there are bolts that are back here. There are 12 millimeter bolts and there are three of them that we're going to take off to get this down. With the skid plate off, now we're going to take out the drain plug and we're going to start draining the oil. This is a 14 millimeter drain plug. Once I remove it, I'm going to go up top, I'm going to remove the oil fill cap, and then I'm also going to pull out the dipstick so that the oil flows a little faster. I'm not going to take it off before I open the drain plug because I don't want it shooting out right away. started. While the oil is still draining, I've wiped off the drain plug. Uh, it's a magnetic drain plug. There was nothing to be concerned about in there. And the Tundra does not come with a drain plug that has a built-in gasket. So this is the gasket that I got from Toyota. And uh, I buy a pack of these things. I don't know how many I got, but uh, I'll leave the part number in the description. That's them there. And uh, whenever I do an oil change, uh, I've got these things, I keep them in the truck. So whenever I do an oil change, uh, they're readily available. I don't have to go hunting for them. It looks like I gotta get some more soon. So I've got the drain plug with the new gasket. Once it's done completely draining out, then uh, we're gonna put that back in. Gonna wipe it down and get the drain plug back in there. So, just gonna... All right. You can torque this, I believe it's 30 foot pounds. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I'm not a big fan of torquing a drain plug because uh, if you over torque it, by even a little bit, it can mess it up pretty bad. So. I just tighten them up good and snug. A little bit more there, and that'll do. All right. Unlike other conventional oil filters, the Tundra's oil filter is not in a metal canister. The Tundra's oil filter is a filter all on its own. It comes with some assembly parts and the filter itself is just a filter. There is a housing that the filter goes into that is on the truck. I actually have an extra one. Um, this is what it looks like. And then there's also a little gated centerpiece um, or perforated, sorry, centerpiece that goes in here, uh, which is actually on the truck now. Um, the way that this works is the filter will go into that housing. This housing screws up into where the oil filter goes in the truck. On the bottom of this housing, there's a little cap, 
and you'll first unscrew this cap and this uh, filter comes with this little plastic nozzle here right there and that will punch itself into this hole at the bottom of the filter holder and it will drain the oil out of the oil filter while it's still up in the truck. Once you finish draining that, then this whole piece will unscrew and with the filter in it, it will then drop down. It's very messy. That's why you wanna get as much oil out of here as you can. When I put this back into the truck, um, there's a gasket there on the bottom. It's actually gonna fit in this little area here, but that will go into, the, into here for the cap and then the filter itself has a gasket, or sorry, the filter holder has a gasket here that you're also gonna change. And when you buy these filters, they are supplied with both gaskets. So that's what we're gonna do now. This is where the oil filter goes on the truck. This is the cap that we're gonna open up to drain. And then I'm gonna put a tool on here to loosen this up and then drop the oil filter down. All right, there's a little bit of oil dripping. This is the little drain funnel that you pop in there. I'm going to try holding this little cylinder under there because it is going to get real messy. It's supposed to stay in there and drain, but it never does. It always wants to pop out. This is a tool that I got from Toyota that fits right there snugly. Um, when I first got the truck, this housing for the filter is actually was plastic. Um, and unfortunately, like many automotive plastic parts, they do fail. So mine had cracked at some point and I got this aluminum one. Um, and at the same time, uh, I got another aluminum one, just like I say, as a spare. So this is the drain plug from here. We're going to put that back in when we're all done draining, but, uh, we're also going to change out the gaskets. So with this tool, just put that on there and get it up here. And loosen her up. My cookies. So it wasn't too bad. It's been worse before. The key is draining as much oil as you can from that drain plug. There it is. And uh, that's the center perforated part I'd mentioned earlier. I'm going to clean this up and then we'll go over changing the gaskets. All right, so now we're going to get this filter cartridge uh, ready to go back into the truck. So I've got a little hook here, and this is the old gasket for the cartridge. Just going to pull that right off. And then I've got the old gasket for the cap as well. Just pop that off. And then I'm going to wipe clean these spots here. What we're going to do is just like with a cartridge oil filter where you will prime the gasket that is on that filter so it doesn't 
stick too hard. We're going to put the new gaskets on here. Uh, this is the oil we're going to use. Uh, it's 0W20 for the Tundra. The Tundra takes just under 8 quarts, about 7.9 quarts. Um, I've got extended performance, high mileage. Uh, I've got some high mileage, and it's supposed to protect for 20,000 miles, fully synthetic. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to take these gaskets and just put a coating of oil on them before we put them on the canister here. All right, so I'm just going to dip my glove in the oil there and get it all over this first gasket. All right, so there's that. And then same thing for the gasket that's going to go on the bottom. A little o-ring. That's going to go there. Just fit that in there. And that's it. Now it says to put the cap on at uh, 13 newton meters. I don't have a, my well my my uh, torque wrench, my newton meter torque wrench doesn't start until 60. So I'm going to tighten this up. I'm just going to snug it up, and then the same thing with this cartridge. When I put it back on the truck with the filter, I'm going to snug it up as well, just hand tight, just like any other oil filter you want to go hand tight uh, yes it does give you a specific amount if you wish to go to uh, 25 newton meters either plus or minus it says 25 newton meters but like i say i just hand tighten it uh, that old german method good and snug that's not mine i heard that from somebody else so this centerpiece just sits right there like so and then you take your filter and your filter will then slide over that and once I tighten up this cap this is ready to go back up into the truck I'm just gonna wipe everything down before I put the filter up there Everything here is ready to go. And again, just going to put it in there hand tight, so gently feed it up there. Now we're going to add our oil. Uh, as I said earlier, the Tundra takes 7.9 quarts. Okay, so that is just under eight quarts. I'm gonna put the oil filler cap back on. We're going to put the dipstick back in. We're gonna start the truck and check it out. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get under the truck. We're gonna check the oil filter. We're gonna check the drain plug for leaks.
We're gonna pull the dipstick and check the oil level. Let's do it. You can see that. All right. We're going to put the skid plate back on the truck and just take note there are a couple little hooks at the front of the skid plate that are kind of tricky sometimes to get on there those are the hooks right there once you get those hooks in it's just a question of bolting everything back up again earlier i stated that there were three bolts along with those three screws there's actually five bolts. I'm missing one. So when I first removed the skid plate, there were four bolts. I'm going to put them back up. Um, there are two tabs right along here where those hooks on the skid plate need to go. So this is one of them here and then the other one here. And I'm going to try and line those up because uh, sometimes it's not that easy. And sometimes it is. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the only thing left to do now is reset the maintenance required light. To do that, we're going to turn the key to the accessory position while the trip meter is set to trip A. At the same time, I'm going to be holding the trip meter reset button. As that is being held, there are going to be a series of dashes going across the trip meter. Once the dashes have gone across, then the maintenance required light is reset. I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Until the next video. Bye.